Yo. The internet is a pretty interesting place. Firstly, because anything you could possibly want from it. Like a genie in a bottle, with endless wishes, it can provide for you your greatest desires. It's also a place full of stories, tales, fables, you might even say. And while there is often a lesson to be learned from long and ongoing tales of fame and fortune, despair and destruction, or something in between, not everything fits into such a nice little bow. Sometimes you wander this great web of possibilities and find rabbit holes that simply are. They exist and nothing more. So today, I ask you simply to join me in this series revival of sorts, and let us simply wander this great web together and see what we find today. After all, you never know what you may discover. It could be haunting and scar you for life, or it could be oddly beautiful, or perhaps it's just rather peculiar, strange, but oddly, interesting all the same, such as the case of the Daria fanfiction multiverse. For those unfamiliar, Daria is an American adult animated sitcom created by Glenn Eichler and Susie Lewis Lynn and ran from 1997 to 2002 on MTV. The show focuses on Daria Morgendorfer, an extremely cynical high school student interacting with others, including her popular and rather superficial younger sister. Did a mime crawl in here and die? I'm putting together an outfit. For your information, this is how deep people dress. Yeah, deeply affected people. Her manic father, business-minded mother, as well as her friends, like the punk and equally cynical but more art-oriented Jane. I almost killed a dog yesterday. Gonna work your way up to human, slowly? And her brother, Trent, who has a band that is constantly in a state of changing its name. You gotta relax, Daria. Things work out, you know? I guess. Okay, thanks for the ride. Thanks for coming to the gig. I gotta get back before Max and Nicholas kill each other. The show oozes in 90s cynicism and is a certified a vibe of a show, of a killer soundtrack. With many of the characters being extremely lovable and the titular character of Daria being quite interesting, as she is pretty even-handed in her sarcastic remarks at mostly characters who never quite get what she's saying. Oh me oh my, a lovely day is dawning. Oh what a joy, I didn't wake up dead. So I can go to school and then resume my yawning, and get my sleep in class instead of in my bed. If you've never watched a show, then I would highly recommend it. It's witty, comfy, and there just really isn't anything quite like it, to be honest. What should be noted, though, is that Daria was a crazy hit, especially with teenagers at the time. Teenagers that were among the first generation to be able to easily use the internet, and use it, they did. My name is Daria. Here I am, smiling. This is my family. At least that's their story. These creatures roam the halls of my school. And this is me with my best friend Jane, smiling. Daria, coming soon on MTV. I've mentioned a few times in the past on this channel that Sonic the Hedgehog was one of those series that had a lot of coverage online, with many dedicated websites for the games, music, comics, TVs, etc. Well, the same can certainly be said for the Daria series. There were absolutely tons, and I mean tons of fan sites, message boards, and fan-created content made around this show, and a lot of which can still be accessed to this day, thanks in no small part to the Daria Wiki, which is described as, quote, a site dedicated to Daria, Daria fandom, and all fan works, especially those since the end of the original series run on MTV, unquote. On that note about fandom, from the same wiki also notes, quote, despite the show's ending in 2002, Daria fandom remains active and well-connected, thanks almost entirely to the internet. Many old fans have stuck around since the end, and both old and new fans still join the community occasionally. Regardless of length and time around, plenty of fanfic and fan art is being produced, albeit not at the same rate as before. However, there is enough going on to give reason 
that Daria fandom still has a lot of life in it." Unquote. Paige also notes some of the sites and means of communication fans have used over the years. Quote, the primary form of communication comes from message boards, specifically the Paper Pushers message boards, or PPMB, and the SH33P's Fluff message board, or SFMB. These two were the biggest and most active. They are both similar in structure, although SFMB allows more liberties than PBMB. Uh, the SFMB is no longer active, however. Daria has a long history on IRC, or Instant Relay Chat. Three chat channels specific to Daria fandom have been used throughout the years, two of which no longer exist. The first of those is Hashtag Daria on EFNet. The second is Hashtag Daria Plus on Dalnet. The current channel is Hashtag Daria Plus on Sorcery. Net. Instructions on how to get to the channel can be found on The Irony Maiden and Lawndale Online. Daria fan activity, new and updated fan works, and various musings and discussions of the show can be found at the Daria fandom blog too. Finally, there is a Daria news group. Alt TV Daria. However, it is not very active anymore. The Lawndale High message board was launched in 2019 as another forum for Daria fans. A Daria Con occurs when two or more Daria fans get together and meet in real life. Most Daria Cons last no longer than a weekend, and often are only a day long, as the fandom is so small compared to others. The minimum of two applies. Events at a Daria Con vary but often there is a combination of watching and discussing the show, along with general socializing between the participants and eating of pizza." Unquote. Now, as noted, while much of the fandom came from the time shortly after the show's ending, it is still very much a active fandom, with the aforementioned Daria fandom blog 2 being extremely active, with posts from, like, literally today. These are a very dedicated lot, something which will become all the more blindingly obvious as we transition into the whole multiverse thing. But just wait, I gotta hold you in some suspense, don't I? But needless to say, unlike a lot of other fandoms, this fandom also seems to have done a very good job at documenting its history, which made for very interesting reading as I was going through all this old Daria-related fandom lore, drama, and the various characters there within. Like I was being transferred back into the early to mid-2000s. And one of the things that I observed from all this, and one of the things I'm sure almost anyone else will almost immediately see, from both the Daria fandom blog 2, to the Daria wiki, to all the way back to old websites that are still up to this day, like Outpost Daria, is that Fanfiction is the most prominent and well cupped up with thing within the fandom, with Outpost Daria having pages upon pages in alphabetical order of the various fanfictions written by, well, fans. While the Daria fandom blog 2 seems to be an easy way to see updates when new chapters or entire fanfictions are finished. Also, fan essays seem to be a very important and prominent thing within this fandom as well, since nearly every website I checked had a dedicated fan essay section for analyzing the characters, themes, making up theories, etc., which I found to be pretty interesting. Something about this show really brought out the writers and people, or maybe the show attracted writers, or... I don't know, but there is something to be noted that the dynamic duo of the show, the main characters, Daria and Jane, being a writer and a artist respectively, there's a parallel to be made between those characters and the fandom. They even had fanfiction contests called Iron Chef, where, much like the show Iron Chef, someone would hand out a core ingredient, or in the case of a story, a theme, an idea, a setting, a character, etc. And then writers would all start furiously click-clacking their keyboards to create the best story that they could given that ingredient. It's a fun creative writing exercise, and perhaps it was this emphasis on writing or fanfiction that got some people to start taking it 
well, pretty damn seriously. How's that coming, by the way? Good. Really good. But I guess I'll get back to my writing. Now, bear in mind that this does happen really no matter where you go in fandoms. No matter what, there's going to be fanfictions that are considered the best of the best. And there's going to be a lot of fanfictions that just straight up aren't very good. And some that you might even say are kind of weird. Um, fetishy, though that might be some fan group's thing. And there's definitely a lot of cringy, not very well written, or just plain bad stuff made as well. Of course, there is still something kind of charming, or at least I find rather charming and nostalgic reading even the worst of uh, fan fiction. I think it's the passion someone has to have for something to even go out of their way to create something centered around it to begin with that makes it all kind of hard to hate. But at the same time, on an objective level, a lot of bad, bonkers-ass shit gets written in the realm of fanfiction. And at some point, it's only natural that critiques start being made. Critics emerge, and when critics emerge, drama ensues. As you might imagine, a fan base as passionate about fanfictions as the Daria fandom is, it was bound to have some pretty crass critics. Perhaps not unlike the show's titular main character herself. And thus emerges Sin C. Green. Sin C. Green, or James Bowman, is described as follows by the Daria Wiki. Quote, James Bowman first rose to prominence, some might say ignominy, under the alias Sin C. Green, writing no-holds-barred criticism of Daria fanfiction. He was originally reviled and hated by most of the Daria fandom, particularly by his now wife, Ruthless Bunny. Cincy Green sparked the endless debate regarding constructive criticism and honest feedback with his often vicious fanfiction reviews at fanfiction.net and his own website known as The Green Sink. The Green Sink further served as a repository for other essays and writings, although it was destroyed in the Geo City shutdown of 2009. He also formally maintained the Daria fandom blog, and also worked on an extensive Daria encyclopedia, earning him the affectionate nickname Harmless Drudge around the house." Unquote. So, to say Green made an impact on the Daria fandom is underselling it. Rather, Green was prolific in this scene. Working in reverse here, Green's Daria Encyclopedia was an extensive online compendium of notes on almost everything, almost every aspect of the Daria series, with it fully being completed in 2004. You can still visit this encyclopedia to this day, by the way, and it's, well, well it's absolutely enormous. Looking at it all and really understanding it was done almost entirely by one man is kind of astounding, especially when it notes even extremely innocuous things that most would consider self-evident. Like, what does the 911 number do in the Daria series? Like, f f why even fucking note this, you know? But he did. And so, it is truly a complete compendium. Then we have the Daria fandom blog that he made, which, as the wiki notes, quote, The Daria fandom blog is a blog mainly devoted to chronicling the events of the Daria message boards, including then-current controversies and listings of new fan works. It also features essays about the series and the fandom in general. And DFB was founded by Sensi Green, who wrote in his initial post of December 26, 2004, We read the Daria message boards, so you don't have to. In addition, a series of extensive reviews was posted for some of the original episodes on the 10th anniversary of their first airing. The Daria fan blog went into hiatus in August of 2007, and was slated to have been taken offline shortly thereafter during the Great Daria Fandom Implosion of 2007. At the time of its demise, the active contributors included Cincy Green and Greybird." Unquote. Now, as already noted, there has since been created a Daria Fandom blog too, 
which was created shortly thereafter the original died in the Great Daria Fandom Implosion of 2007. Which, when I read the title of that, I just had to know what the hell that was. And apparently, as the Daria Wiki notes, it was, quote, The Great Daria Fandom Implosion of 2007 was a combination of events, and many of them unrelated and previously announced as far back as fall, of 2006 that led to the loss of a number of longtime Daria fans and writers and the loss of dormancy of various major websites supporting the fandom. A dormancy here means the website was no longer updated. Some of these events were benign, some were not. The only actual relationship that most shared was in their timing. Through the spring and summer of 2007, curiously, the implosion took place slightly over 10 years after Daria first aired. An unintentional irony is that, because of the perception held by many in D the Daria fandom that the implosion signaled a potential collapse of the fandom itself, the implosion actually signaled a rebirth of the fandom." Unquote. We'll get back to that implosion in a moment. But uh, back on topic, that of Cincy Green. As noted, Green was a critic, and thusly the old Daria fandom blog alongside his dedicated website, The Green Sink, he managed to make a name for himself as both a respected and hated member of the fandom, with him critiquing tons of fan fictions, ruthlessly tearing them apart, or so that's how it's described. As unfortunately, the green sink was wiped out by the GeoCity shutdown of 2009, which rendered the site no longer accessible as GeoCities had been one of the main ways that people created websites in the 1990s and early 2000s. As the service was free, within a certain bandwidth, and had an easy to use interface. These attributes made it perfect for fandom websites, Meaning, when its service ended, a whole lot of fan sites died in the process. So much history, lost to the sands of time. So in other words, we may never be able to see what Green's legendary disses of Daria fanfictions entailed. But given how absolutely bonkers detailed Green's Daria encyclopedia is, it's fair to say he took this series rather seriously. This fandom seriously, and thus probably took the fanfictions pretty damn seriously. But there actually is a little bit of evidence of this, beyond the encyclopedia and what others' accounts. In fact, there is perhaps no greater evidence of this man's dedication to this fandom and series than the Daria Multiverse. I don't believe it. You did this yourself. Of course not! I had one of the cuter technical types from school set it up for me. I had to ask. Okay, so the Daria Multiverse is described as, quote, an artificial designation created by Cincy Green that encompasses not only canon Daria episodes, but all other Daria fanfiction universes as well. When those alternate realities explored in Daria fanfiction diverge significantly, from what is considered canon Daria. These universes are designated by a numerical combination, and only rarely letters, in the format Daria XXX, where XXX is a distinctive number. Since there is no way to automatically designate numbers, the method of assigning numbers is inspired by the late Marvel Comics editor Mark Grunewald. In Marvel Universe Cosmology, the number of a universe is determined by the number of comic book where the universe made its first appearance or is heavily influenced by that book. The number might also relate to an important date or fact about that alternate reality." Unquote. So if you didn't catch that, Green was so anal about making sure fanfiction stayed within the realm of canon and what was canon to the Daria universe, that if a fanfiction went outside that realm of canon, he would designate it as a different canon entirely. In other words, if any character was acting out of character, or something new or crazy is introduced that wasn't in the original show, in a fanfiction that he read, which let me tell ya, he happens to have read a fucking lot of fanfiction, he would painstakingly organize it, like setting aside a new file in a file cabinet in 
some attempt of organizing it for himself and for others. Maybe out of spite, maybe out of being OCD and just really needing it to be organized. I, I, I really don't fucking know what the ultimate reason for him doing this was, but nonetheless, he did. So okay, you might be wondering, alright, so he split up every fanfiction that didn't fit into the Daria fandom by a separate universe number. Kind of strange, kind of out there. So how many separate universes did he organize in this anal attempt at keeping track of every different version of Daria fanfiction? Well, you guess. 50? No. A hundred. That seems like a lot, right? No. 150? 218 different universes. That's 218 different fanfictions that this man organized for this giant Daria multiverse. On one hand, this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen a fan do. On the other hand, he has managed to create a database that at least for the time would have been fairly comprehensive in understanding what differences and new ideas each fanfiction brought to the table for their Daria fanfiction. Now, of course, I keep saying anal and crazy and stuff. I suppose he could have just done this out of sheer fun. I mean, I suppose you have to be having at least a little bit of fun if you're this dedicated to the fandom and making an entire encyclopedia about the Daria series. Maybe it was just something he was really into, and organizing it as a multiverse was more creative than organizing it as canon and not canon in a binary sense. Now, if that wasn't dedicated, we'll say, enough for you, what if I told you that there started to be fan fictions in which this multiverse was canon, and there were characters and stories that revolved around the characters of Daria dimension hopping between the different alternate versions of Daria. Hell, there were even original characters and villains that appeared across multiple fanfictions from multiple writers playing off of this concept, such as Judith, a sociopathic version of Daria Morgendorfer that traveled through the Daria multiverse wreaking havoc and killing any other alternate Darias that she encounters. There is a trans-dimensional military US agency called Delphi, which has a wiki page that reads like a fucking SCP About Me page, and there were Daria fanfictions written with the expressed purpose of being an alternate reality to fit into this alternate reality multiverse. To add a further spice to the already quite spice-filled multiverse. And let me tell you, reading through all this and like painstakingly trying to see what some of the differences between all these different Daria fanfictions are is, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty wild, bro. Now, don't construe my shock as mockery, mind you. Honestly, reading through this Daria multiverse and how it's organized, along with seeing all these various websites and creative works by these longtime fans is honestly pretty damn cool. It's amazing what a creative fandom can come up with. In the same way, the Sonic fanbase has an unprecedented amount of fan games and fan art and, well, pretty much everything else, Daria has continued to have a much smaller but still very dedicated fanfiction scene that have some, like Green, taken far beyond the normal scene and into sprawling multiverse fanfiction into fanfiction hopping affairs that I imagine only gets more convoluted and harder for any outsider to truly understand the longer they go on and the further deep you go in. What started as a means of organizing alternate canons and fanfiction became something that could be used as a creative tool, an outlet, a jumping off point for new fanfiction set within the idea of a Darian multiverse, including Green himself, who also dabbled in alternate universe versions of the characters and stories within that multiverse. It's stuff like this, which is exactly why I love looking through fandom wikis and the like and really seeing what kind of interesting things they've come up and made together that maybe not very many people outside the fandom are aware of. And it's characters like Cincy Green that always interests me the most. People who created a lot, fully engrossed and dedicated themselves into the fandom and became a figure that many remember for 
better or for worse. Now I'll admit, this video was kind of a meandering walk through old Daria fanbase lore. I'm not even sure if anyone cares about this kind of stuff, but I know I certainly do, and I hope some of you also as well. There's something really fascinating to me about looking into a fandom of something that maybe I'm at least familiar with, or maybe even a casual fan of, uh, but something that was never obsessed enough I guess, to go seeing it in the world outside of my own basic enjoyment. And instead, seeing what it might have been like if it was something that I was extremely obsessed with, and seeing what those types of people ended up creating. Since E. Green, as hated and reviled as he was, seems to have made a significant impact on Daria as a fandom, and with time, maybe even won some people over, including one of the most prominent critics of his, who went by Ruthless Bunny, who the wiki describes as, quote, perhaps a long forgotten figure in Daria fandom. She was noted for extensive, sometimes novel length fan fictions that primarily focused on shipping and for being one of very few people willing to stir up the volatile fanbase, both on the paper pushers message boards as well as the hashtag Daria plus IRC chat room, unquote. And while Green and Ruthless Bunny butted heads quite a lot, though unfortunately it seems like there really isn't any messages or examples of this butting of heads, but I'm assuming she's a fanfic writer, he's a fanfic critic, you can probably guess how they butted heads at some point. And yet, they would both end up getting married sometime later. Kind of funny how that sort of stuff works out. From online flame wars to real life loving marriage. And the two are even known to hold occasional Daria cons in their home in, of Atlanta and has hosted various Daria fans as house guests throughout the years. So while they may not be very active at all online, they are still Daria fans through and through. It's always nice to see sweet, wholesome endings in such a sick, sad world. I could honestly keep going since the Daria fandom is quite diverse and full of weird little rabbit holes, but I mainly want to discuss the oddity that is the Daria multiverse and the rather infamous figure behind its inception. So I think that's enough wandering the web for now. What did you think of all this? Are you a fan of Daria? Do you know anything cool or interesting lore-wise? Or of interesting, important, or infamous figures within a fandom, perhaps a more niche fandom like this one? If you do, feel free to share your stories and comment down below. You never know. If your story is compelling enough, we just may find ourselves wandering through your suggestion one night. But until next time, this has been Dylan the Night Owl flying off. Yo! Thank you to all my channel members and patrons, including all of my night eggs and night outlets, as well as all my great night howls, including Star Punch Gaming, Hex Maniac Hannah, Cruisin Obscura, Tony Teramaya, Justice, Macabre Kaiju, Ho Hot, and Medusa's Hex, as well as a super special thank you to all of my Arch Owls including the good Chi Vibe Zen Garden Party, the Wisdom Rich Daniel G, as well as the Spooky's House of Jump Scares Lore Master Doggy NGT, the Gun Totin Thursday 14, the Fearless Forgotten Ace, and the Super Saiyan Sword. 